Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics One. This lecture is entitled Karna Maps. Okay, this lecture we're going to talk exclusively around the bear trap that we're going to be using a lot. It's the Karna map. Like bear traps, there are a number of different styles to catch a bear. There are a number of different styles to catch a fully minimized SOP expression. That's ultimately what a Karna map is going to produce. What is a fully minimized SOP expression? Well, it's, it's a systemized method of minimizing logic. I know we've gone over our Boolean rules, but you've already seen using the Boolean rules, there's a little bit of an art form to it. There's a lot of things to remember. If I have a systemized method of minimization, I can come up with a minimum expression and not mess anything up. And what's the purpose of a minimized expression? Well, it's the less gates, it's less power consumption, less connections. It's cheaper. In short, basically, it's less chance of screwing the expression up. What a Carnot map is, if you could imagine our truth tables, just think about our truth tables, a two variable truth table, A and B, where A and B can take every possible combination. So what I'm doing is I'm writing them down in this direction, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. I could just as easily write them in kind of this row column format where A goes down this way, B goes down that way, where A takes all possible values, 0 or 1, because it's binary. B takes all possible values, 0 or 1, because it's binary. And the intersection of the rows and columns form that binary combination. Okay, so the intersection of the rows and columns. What is this value? Well, it's 0 for A's. All A's have zeros in this column. In this, excuse me, that's a row. I always mess those up. Rows go left to right, columns go up and down. So let's redo that. In this row, all A's are always zero. In this column, B is a zero. In this column, B is a one. So the intersection of, let me go ahead and get rid of these arrows here, this row and this column provides the address A zero, B zero. The intersection of that same row with this column provides the address A zero, B one dig is really not that hard. Okay? You're just kind of making this streets and avenues. And if, if you want to think in that manner, what's the intersection of A1 street with B0 street? Well, it's A1, B0. What's this one? 1, 1. Streets and avenues. And I should, to make this a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is kind of do this. Let's put a little diagonal letting me know that A goes this way, B goes that way. Okay, so the streets and avenues approach, just like every city, every grid-sized city on Earth, intersection of 6th Street and 8th Avenue. So that's for two variables. That's easy. Try to do this with three variables. It kind of runs out because we're going in the rows and columns. We, we need a third dimension. Okay, so there's a little bit of a trick to do this with a three variable. What you're going to do is you're going to put two variables one side, which forms the rows, and one variable on the columns, or vice versa. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so a three variable truth table has got your values A, B, C, and they can form all possible combinations, triple zero to triple one. I want to put that in a Karna map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of the variables, in this particular case, I'm going to take A and B and put them in the rows, A and B, put that little slash designator there, and then I'm going to put C as the columns. What are the possible, and just look at C right now, what are the possible values that C could take? Well, obviously, zero or one. It's binary. What are the possible values of A and B? Well, it's two bits. So it could possibly take four different combinations. And now before I write this, you have to remember this. You have to remember this. You cannot write this in binary sequence. This must be written in gray code. Okay, if you remember right, way back when, what is gray code? Gray code is almost like binary, except the counting in break, uh, gray code, only one bit position changes at a time. And lucky for you, you only need to remember four sequences. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, you don't need to remember beyond. I'm not asking you to count beyond that in gray code. You must put this in gray code. And you will see this becomes incredibly crit critical for cell adjacency later on. Like I said, you may understand K-maps. You may understand everything I have discussed in this entire digital electronics series, you go ahead and sit down for the final and mess up gray code, guess what? Your career is messed up. You gotta go back to kindergarten and learn how to play block with blocks again. You have to do this in gray code. I cannot stress that because you'll see in cell adjacency, it doesn't work if you do it in binary sequence. Let's go back to our streets and avenues. 
what are those the cells, those individual cells within that Carnot map? Basically, it's the binary combination. It's the intersection of the rows and columns. So this row has A0, B0, A0, B0. This column right here has C0. This column has C1. Go ahead and see if you can fill out the address, which buildings are at which street and which avenue. If you've done everything correctly, you should get 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 1. I'm going to skip something. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. I'm going to go back up. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. You don't have to skip those things, but what I'm doing is just kind of reminding you that there is a gray code sequence when you're doing two variables. You could just as easily, maybe on your cheat sheets, here's a good shortcut. What's triple zero? Zero. What's zero, zero, one? It's a one. What's zero, one, zero? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you do triple zero to triple one, what are the numbers that you get? You get zero up to seven, i.e. eight positions. You could just remember that too. That's a great cheat sheet. Like I said earlier, it doesn't matter which two variables you use. You could put, if you want to do it this way, A, just have two rows, 0, 1, and make B, C up here. And what you're going to do is do all possible combinations of B, C. 0, 0, 0, 1. Notice a dramatic pause. I'm going to do something stupid. 1, 0, 1, 1. All right. I just failed the final. I got to go all the way back and tell my folks that I failed the final. It's going to be rough. Don't do that. 1, 1, 1, 0. Exact same thing. What's the intersection of A Avenue and A Avenue 0 with BC 0, 0 Street? Triple 0. 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0. 1, double 0. 1, 0, 1. Triple 1. 1, 1, 0. And you could put it in a high rise or you could put it in a two level dwelling. It doesn't matter. But uh, I have a tendency, I just like this one a little bit better. I don't know why. So you may never see me use the lower interpretation. But the techniques that I show you are always going to be the same. One quick thing about these three variables before we move on to four variables and uh, actually putting these things into a Carnot map is those product terms. Remember from our previous lecture about an SOP. If I was given the combination, let's say that guy right there, triple zero, A, B, C, they're all zeros. What does an SOP look for? An SOP looks for a one. How could I make a one in that Carnot map if A was a zero and B was a zero and C was a zero and I was feeding an AND gate? Well, the answer is, is just like you'd expect. Take A zero, take B zero, take C zero. They're all zeros. Feed them all into inverters. So what is this AND gate? It gets a one, a one, and a one, and it outputs a one. So what would the expression for that AND gate with three inverters on the input look like? It would look like not A, and it would not B, and it would not C. So I could just as easily take that binary combination, triple zero, and put this expression in there. And that's also another great shortcut for you to have, potentially on your cheat sheets. Notice I'm stomping my foot on the floor. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, so let's go ahead and put another cheat sheet to the to the right of this. So here's my little reminder. A, B, C for the combination triple zero. I'd have to invert A, invert B, invert C. What about the guy next door? Zero, zero, one. What would I have to do to an AND gate for A zero, B zero, C one? Well, just get rid of that inverter. Straight shot through. Okay, what's that expression? Well, it's not A and not B and C. I could put that right there. You get the picture? Here's a shortcut. Forget about the AND gates. If it's a zero, invert it. If it's not a zero, i.e. a one, don't do nothing to it. So what's the expression? Zero, one, zero. What I'm referring to is this guy right here. Let me get rid of that. What's the expression for that? Well, what's the domain? It's A, B, C. A, B, C. Well, if A was a zero, invert it. B is not a zero. It's a one. Don't touch it. C is a zero. Invert it. A, B, C. What's my domain? I'm talking about the guy next door. Zero, one, one, real easy, zero, invert it. B is a one, C is a one, don't do anything with it. Fill out the rest of the truth table, or excuse me, fill out the rest of the, the cheat sheet for the product terms. There you go. So that is a great addition to a cheat sheet, especially when you start doing this thing for your first time. You, trust me, this will become amazingly simple the more practice you get at it, and you're going to be able to look at these maps and see the expression instantaneously. Right now, don't worry about some of the stuff I've talked about, seeing expressions and groups, don't worry about that right now. All I'm looking for you to do is map things. Okay, let's try an example. I'm going to give you a three variable expression. Let's see if we can map this. Okay, so there's my expression that I'm giving you. It's A and B and it would not C or A and B and C or A 
and it would not be and C. Go ahead and figure out using either three of those things. And let's try this one first. Try that one first. I know I know I gave you the cheat sheet right there. I'll go ahead and try that first one, the rows and columns definition first. If we remember right, back from our SOP lectures, what we're trying to do is find the binary combinations in the truth table that will give us ones. Okay? So this is a fully expanded SOP expression. What we get is A, and let's do this in this organization, A, B, C. So for the first one, it's A1, B1. Well, C is negated, so I've got to put a zero. The second one, it's triple one because they're not negated, are the same. And then the third product term is A, not B, C. So it's one. 0, 1. What does the SOP expression look for? It looks for 1s. So draw your k-map. There's a blank k-map right there. C can take the value of 0 or 1. A and B can take the value 0, 0, 0, 1. Notice the pause. I'm skipping down. 1, 0, 1, 1. You have to do it in gray code. It will not work, and I'll show you why it won't work a little bit later. Take the three product terms. 1, 1, 0. Okay, where is A1, B1, C0? We'll just go where A and B are ones. It's in this row. C is a zero. It's in that column. There you go. Put a one. Go for the second product term. I'm going to get rid of these other highlighters. Where is triple one? Well, it's in one, one, one. Put a one there. Finally, the third product term, where is one, zero, one? We'll go to the one, zero row and the one column. Put a one there. You have successfully mapped your first three variable card on that. We're not going to do anything with it right now. So all I want to do is just talk about mapping things right now. We'll come back to this and let's call this example one. What we're going to try to do eventually, what are we doing with our card on maps? We're going to try to derive the minimum SOP expression using this came up. For right now, just mapping it. Don't worry about the rest of the next step. We'll come back to this one. Okay, so if we did a three variable Carnot map, what's the next step? Four variable. Just like four variable, excuse me, just like all the other examples before, our truth tables we have been going down where it goes quadruple zero all the way to quadruple one, taking all possible combinations of input in between. What we're going to try to do is put this in a row column format and A, B slash C, D. And all I'm going to do is do the intersections of the rows and columns and those intersecting, those the address of the cell is that binary combination of those inputs, A, B, and C, D. Okay, now this is three variables. You should have been able to do that pretty easily, and you can do it kind of that vertical orientation or the horizontal orientation. But And I'm, I'm going to come back and visit this thing again, the three variables. Taking these values in a four variable is, there's the easy way to do this. And there's the hard way to do it. If, and we will come back and visit, and I'll show you what I'm talking about a little bit later. If your truth table is set up as A, B, C, D, how are you going to set up your K map? Set it up A, B, C, D. Don't do something hard like this. If your truth table is set up D, C, B, A, do not try to set up your K map like this way. A, B, C, D. Because some of you guys are going to freak out, well, it has to be alphabetical. Guess what? It does not have to be alphabetical. D, C, B, A. Those are just terms I picked out of thin air. They could be banana, orange, apple, lime. It doesn't matter what the names of those things. It doesn't have to be alphabetical. What I'm saying is, is if your truth table is arranged, so DCBA is quadruple zero to quadruple one, it is far easier to read the addresses in that truth table if you stick with the orientation DCBA. So what I'm saying is, is if you do a KMAP DCBA, it's easy to realize zero, 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 zero means quadruple zero orientation D, C, B, A. If you do it backwards, it's going to be messed up. It's not going to be messed up. It's just going to be harder to use. And ultimately, you should still come up with the same answer, but with a lot more effort. All right. That being said, I know that may have, you may not understand completely what I'm talking about right now because I have not done it yet, but we'll come back to that. All right, let's do an alphabetical orientation because people freak out if I go backwards first. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. The rows. A and B. Take all possible combinations of A and B. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Notice I'm going in gray code. C and D. Take all possible combinations of, of C and D. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. I'm going in gray code. If I've got four rows and four columns, it means I've got 16 addresses in my city. In A, B row, all A, Bs have zero zeros. In A, B row zero one, all, B, all A, Bs have values zero one. 
you get the picture. I could just as easily do this in the column format. In column CD00, all CDs have 00. Column CD01, all CDs have 01. You get the picture. And guess what? You're totally wrong. Why? I did it there. I'm good there. This is my error. Look at that. Those are wrong. You have to do gray code there too. And I'll show you exactly why there is a um, why this is critical. So let's redo this thing right here. This is one. Whoops. Let's get a get rid of the highlighter. One 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 zero. Okay. So now we're good. Rows and columns. What are the address? What's the where is one one zero one? And I'm talking A B C D. One one. It's that row. Zero one. That column. That is the intersection of one one zero one. I have found the address one one zero one. Or if I was to create the expression for that product term represented by that cell, it's A1, B1, C0, or not C, D. So now we can kind of make a cheat sheet very similar to what we did for our three variables. And what I can do is there's kind of those two levels of those cheat sheets. Just take the binary number equivalent and stick it in there or use the product terms in there. So let's do the binary number equivalent. So there is our, and I'm not going to trick you this time. What is the binary equivalent for row zero, zero, column zero, zero? Well, it's triple, excuse me, quadruple zero. What is that? That's a zero, and then a one, then a two, then a three, okay? Because it's zero, zero, one, one. Okay, now move down to the next row. What is zero, one, zero, zero, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Notice those little gray code skips in there. It's something a little funky about our addresses, but it's extremely useful later. What is the address for, excuse me, what is the expression? What is the product term for this one, that row, and that column? Well, it's A, B, C, D, 0, 1, 0, 1. What's the product term for that that would make it a 1? Well, if it's an AND gate, getting 0, 1, 0, 1, respectfully, A, B, C, D, what would I have to do that A? Invert it. What would I have to do with the B? Nothing. What would I have to do with the C? Invert it. What would I have to do with the D? Nothing. There you go. What is the expression that would give me that term, that would make that term, those inputs a 1, excuse me, not A. And it with B, and it with not C, and it with D. So, shortcut it. Don't worry about the AND gate anymore. If it's a 0, invert it. If it's a 1, leave it alone. Invert it, leave it alone. Invert it, leave it alone. Exact same things I got earlier. You can do that for every single address within our 4K map city, and you're going to come up with something like this. Okay, there's a kind of a blank thing. I haven't done the negations yet. Just to show you a quadruple zero. Well, all inputs are need to be inverted. Triple zero one, so I need to invert first three. I'll get it. This zero zero one zero all the way in the northeast corner. Zero zero one zero. What do I do with this last one here? Zero zero one one. Go ahead and see if you can fill out the rest of these for the product terms. And there you go. Just to check your work, just grab one at random. Let's grab this guy. One zero one zero. Look at our product term. A not B C not D. What does that represent? Don't do nothing to A. B invert it. Don't do anything with C. D invert it. One zero one zero. Is that the address we want? One zero one zero one zero one zero. Yep. So that's a that's a good uh, helpful crutch to have if you're first learning these things. You will by the time you get done with this thing, you'll be able to look at something and just say you know what it is. Now we talked about the four variable Carnot map. Let's go ahead and see if we can take a fully full SOP expression and fully expanded SOP expression. I'm just going to give it to you and put it in a four variable Carnot map using these three little cheat sheets right here. All right, so here's our expression. Okay, so here's our giant four variable fully expanded SOP expression right there. This looks familiar because yes, it was an example and I'm purposely doing that uh, from the SAP Expressions lecture, the previous one. Go ahead and see if you can put it into this K-map. You want to make your life hard? You want to make your life difficult? D, C, B, A. Try it. They'd be stupid. Okay, you can put a hat on your foot. A, B, C, D, because they're already written A, B, C, D. Okay, you don't need to have it make your life difficult. And again, these combinations, when I say the product term is equal to, for example, A, B, not C, not D, D. What if I change the headings here? X, Y, Z, A. What does that mean? I mean, I'm just, I'm purposely messing with you. It's all it means is X, Y, not Z, not A. Those names of those variables mean absolutely 
nothing. You can call them whatever you want to. As long as you stay organized, your expressions, and I will show you examples to prove to you that those names mean nothing. The order in which you put them into the KMAP means everything. That being said, try to put this expression in there. Start off with this product term. Let's be lazy. Just look in our product term cheat sheet right here. Where is A not B C D? A not B C D. Well, there's a bunch of A not Bs. Where's C D? Right there. So I'm going to put a product term. Excuse me. I'm going to put a one. What again? What is an SOP expression for? Look for it. Looks for ones right there. I could just as easily do this table right here. If the binary combination, what is the binary combination for the second product term that will give us an A? Excuse me, give us a 1. Well, A should be a 1. B's got an inversion bar over it, so put a 0. C is a 1. D's got an inversion bar over it, so put a 0. So where's 1, 0, 1, 0 on our little cheat sheet? Right there. 1, 0, 1, 0. Put a 1 there. Use whatever technique you wish, whichever memory aid you wish, go ahead and see if you can come up with the, and I'm going to do them in, uh, do them in banks of three here. So I'll do this one. So pause it, try to do those three, pause it again, try to do those three. Okay. So pause, try to hit that first bank of three. Okay. So for that first product here, actually let's, let's the one in yellow. Okay. Let's describe it that way. The one in yellow, not A, not B, and it was C, D. Not A, not B, and it was C, D right there. Okay. The one in green, what is that? And I'm purposely flip-flopping back and forth between uh, these memory aids here. Use whichever one you like. Zero, because it's inverted. Zero, because it's inverted. One, because it's not inverted. Zero, because it's inverted. Zero, zero, one, zero, up in the northeast. This one, uh, since we haven't used the uh, little, the one in the, the center there, let's go ahead and try this one. So A, zero, B, zero, C, zero, D, one. What is the binary number? Triple zero, one is the binary number. One. Where is it? Right there. One. So you can use any memory aid you wish to go ahead and resolve this second bank. Let's go ahead and what I'll do is I'll just put them in there. You do the explanation and check your work, check my work, make sure I'm getting it right. So pause the recording and see if you can do those final two product terms. Okay, there you go. That's the fully filled out K map right there. What is this one? It's quadruple zero. Put it right there. What's this one? It's one one zero one. And that one's right there. So we showed you how to fill out a three variable K map. We showed you to how to fill out a four variable K map. We definitely highlighted the fact that you need to put this in gray code, the dimensions left and right. Let's talk about a little bit about how a K map is oriented. Okay, there's this concept of called adjacency, and this is why it's uber critical to use the gray code. Okay, if you remember the description of gray code, what is the description of gray code? It's kind of like binary counting, but only one bit position changes uh, values at a time as we move from left to right or up and down for that matter. That's what cell adjacency is. Okay, cell adjacency is if cells are adjacent to each other, are those cells that differ by one variable only. Let's go ahead. I'm going to make a big space for this, we'll talk about cell adjacency. And that, by the way, before I do that, that was example two. So that's for this guy right there. We'll come back to this because all we're doing right now is just mapping them. We're going to come back and actually do what the K-map is supposed to do. We're going to catch a bear. We're going to get ourselves the fully minimized SOP expression. So we'll come back to example one and two and show you, but I have to do this diversion for cell adjacency before we talk about that. So I'm going to wipe it out, give us something, a bear K-map, we can talk about adjacency. Okay, so there's our bear K-map here. doesn't matter what I call these variables, X, Y, Z, A, whatever. Just think of the cells, okay? Let's say 0, 1, 1, 1. Which cells are adjacent to? Well, the cells that differ by one variable only. And here's a shortcut, north, south, east, west. Those things are all adjacent. North, go this way. South, go that way. East, go this way. West, go that way. Okay, look at this. 0, 0, 1, 1. Is that adjacent to our original cell? So here's our original cell. 0, 1, 1, 1. And let's call this, because I want to stay in track, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Is the one north of it adjacent to it? So the north is 0, 0, 1, 1. Adjacencies, again, differ by one variable only. What's the one variable that's different? It's B. We're adjacent. Try that test to the one south of it. 1, 1, whoops, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Is the one south of it adjacent? Yes, it is, because A is the only thing that's different. East, 0, 1, 1, 0. Is it adjacent? Yes, because D is the only thing that's different. Finally, the one west of it, 0, 1, 0, 1. 
which is the only variable that's different? C. So north, south, east, and west are adjacent because they differ by one variable only. My question to you is the one northeast of it, i.e. the diagonal, is that adjacent? 0, 0, 1, 0. So our original cell, again, our, our home base, is that guy. And I'm just picking that cell by random. You could do this for any cell. 0, 1, 1, 1. That's my original. Is, if that's A, B, C, D, is 0, 0, 1, 0 adjacent? Well, B is different and D is different. So the answer is no, they are not. And you could do that for all diagonal corners. So north, south, east, and west, yes. Diagonal, geez, I don't know how to spell that. No. Okay, there are special cases. So these are the general rules about adjacent. I'm not going to spell that either. Adjacency, ADJ, diag. Not one of my strong points. I've got other redeeming qualities. Okay, uh, north, south, east, west, yes. Diagonal, no. Special cases at the edges. Left, right, top, bottom. This is cool. Watch this. Clean up this thing. I'm going to grab a cell at the right edge. 0, 1, 1, 0. We already know this guy's adjacent. We already know that guy's adjacent. We already know that guy's adjacent. No, no. What if I went around behind here and popped up on that side like Pac-Man? Is 0, 1, 0, 0 adjacent to our original cell? So our original cell is 0, 1, 1, 0. A, B, C, D. Is this one via wraparound adjacency? 0, 1, 0, 0. Is it adjacent to it? A is the same. B is the same. D is the same. C is the only thing that's different. It is adjacent. And you could do this analysis for, for, uh, analysis for every single cell on this right edge and this left edge, and you will find the left and right edge via that wraparound adjacency, going around the globe, going around the other side, going around like Pac-Man, the left and right edges are in fact adjacent. If you can almost imagine you know, wrapping your paper up in a tube, I guess, those things are adjacent. I don't know if that helps or makes it more confusing. Same thing with the tops and bottoms. Okay, let's go ahead and clean this up. So here's cell, and I'm just picking this one by random. 1001. Zero, zero, one. Yes, 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 no, no. Is via wraparound adjacency that guy adjacent? Our original value was 1001 zero, 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 one, A, B, C, D. The cell I'm questioning, 0, 0, zero, one. Zero, 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 1. Is it adjacent? Same, 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 different. There is only one variable that has changed, therefore that cell is adjacent. Think about the edges, left and right are adjacent with each other, top and bottom are adjacent with each other, and if you could think of you're wrapping it in a tube like that, and if we were wrapping it in the tube the other way, think of it as a sphere. I don't know if that helps. It's KMAP world, okay, KMAP planet. All right, while we're here, if this one is immediately below it, i.e. wrapping around the back, triple zero one is adjacent, what if I went that way? What if I went up that way? I'd land here and there. It's almost like a diagonal. No, no. All right. What about cells in the corner? This is a this is neat. Cells in the corner basically are on the left edge or the right edge. Let's do this guy. One zero zero zero. Cells in the corner. North. Yes, it's adjacent. East. Yes, it's adjacent. Diagonal. No, it's not. Top is adjacent with bottom. Bottom is adjacent with top. Go around the back. Land there. Yes, that is adjacent. Cell on the left edge. Is it adjacent with something on the right? Go on the back, pop up there. Yes, that's adjacent. Go diagonal. Yeah, we went there. Didn't happen. Go diagonal. We'd end up here. No. Go there. It's, I don't know if you can see this, uh, how to describe it. There. Does that make sense? No, it's not adjacent. And then if I went this way, no, it's not adjacent. What I'm saying is, let's use some colors here. Yes, that's all adjacent. Those diagonals are not. Just Think of north, south, east, and west, okay? Those are the ones that are adjacent. Because it's in the corner, its left edge is adjacent with the one on the right edge. And because it's in the bottom, it's uh, adjacent with the cell on the top. Just think about north, south, east, and west. You're going around the tube or around the back of the globe. Okay, so now that we've talked about the K-map itself, how it's organized, we've talked about cell adjacency. Uh, let's actually go ahead and put something in there and do what we call grouping. Before I do that, I want to just just to be clear, clear about this cell adjacency, if I accidentally forgot to put that in gray code, um, I'm messing up adjacency. I can no longer tell which cells are adjacent because that positional switch, I mean, think about this, you're going from 0, 0 to 0, 1 to both variables switching, 1, 0. Okay, that leap right there and this leap right here, it's you 
can't demonstrate adjacency. And it's critical for grouping because that's what we want is adjacent cells. So let's talk about grouping. And what I'm going to do is do example one. If you remember right, example one is up here, this guy right there. So let's go ahead and take this K map, which we've already mapped into there, put that expression in there. And let's actually go ahead and do what I'm going to call grouping. And what we're going to come up with is the minimize SOP expression for this thing right here, which again is not the minimum expression. It has some excess terms in there, and we might be able to simplify this. So let's go ahead and try to group that and come up with a minimized SOP expression for it. Okay, there are several rules, kind of three rules, but there are rules within the rules to determine the minimized SOP expression. So the first one is you're going to group your ones. And there are, like I said, there are rules within the rules. Uh, we'll go back into the, just like working with General Electric, there are rules within rules. If you've ever tried to work with General Electric, you'll understand what I mean when you work for them. Rule two is determine that group product expression. I know this may not mean anything to you right now. We'll come back to each one of these things. Group three, because we're coming up with an SOP, a sum of products, what are we going to do? We're going to sum the results or sum the groups. For the rules within the rules, grouping the ones, there are two rules there. I'm going to call it A and B. I'm going to give myself some space. First sub rule is maximize the size of the group. And rule two is minimize the number of groups. And we'll come back to this in a second. The maximum size for the groups, there can be groups of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Do you see the pattern forming here? There's powers of 2. Okay, they're only using powers of 2. If you get a group of 3, you're doing it wrong. So the sizes are powers of 2. Okay, minimizing the number of groups. There are sub rules within this here. Okay, so that's kind of our first rule, sub rule, is the sizes of the groups, uh, only powers of 2. A second sub rule is terms within that group must be adjacent. ADJ, adjacent. I've got to give myself some space here. I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, that's a little bit better organized here. So we're talking about the maximizing the group. Okay, the first sub rule within that, the group size must be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, i.e. powers of 2. Terms within that group must be adjacent. Number three, get the largest group, obviously, because we're within the maximize the group. Finally, all ones, because we're grouping the ones, all ones must be in a group. Otherwise, we're leaving something behind. And when you minimize the number of groups, what's really cool about this, you can have overlapping groups. As long as all ones are accounted for, you can still have overlapping groups. And what's cool about that, you could potentially minimize the number of groups. I just spit out a mouthful here, but let's look at what example one was. If you remember right, what we did for example one is we took our expression A and B and not C, or A and B and C, or A and not B and C. And in this particular case, we came up with binary combinations that gave us those ones for our SOP, our fully expanded SOP expression, and dumped them in a K-map. You should be able to do that pretty easy. Now what we're going to try to do is we're going to use our KNAP to come up with a minimum SOP expression. And this is at a point very similar to how I showed you guys superposition theorem in uh, electronics 1 and 3. Bust out a colored pencil. Uh, this is the best way to do this thing because you can get yourself confused. I'm going to use red for my first group. What I'm going to do is draw a circle or an oval or whatever around a group of ones. And I'm going to try to make that the largest group, but I can only do in groups of two, one, two, four, eight, and 16. They must be adjacent. And I'm going to grab the largest group and I'm going to make sure all ones must be in a group. And I'm just going to do this first one. Here's my red pencil. I'm going to grab this group right here. It's a group of two. They are adjacent to each other. Okay, because they are respectfully east and west of each other. It's kind of the largest group I can grab because if I go any larger, you know, there's there, I can't do group of three. Okay, and it's just it just doesn't work. Okay, so it's the largest group. Have I gotten number four though? All ones must be in a group. No, because I got one hanging out there. So that means I have to have another group. So I'm gonna take up my blue pencil and I'm gonna grab this second group. Is that a correct answer? No because I'm not maximizing the size of the group, because check this out, the one north of it is adjacent to it. So I'm gonna grab that one. Well, there's a group of two, but they're overlapping. No problem, man, we, got, we can have overlapping groups. So let's look at the, the group in blue, the group size. It's group of two, we're fine. The cells must be adjacent to each other. Yeah, they're north and respectfully south of each other. It's the largest group I can get, because 
I can't grab any other ones. All the ones must be in a group. Yeah, we got all the ones there. B, minimize the groups, minimize the number of the groups. I can have overlapping groups, okay? So I've minimized the number of groups. I don't have to have um, any other groups up there because I've accounted for all ones that I've just happened to have overlapping. Okay, now, step two, determine the group product expression. This is where the colored pencils come in handy. For the entry level, what I'm gonna do is look at the terms in red and I'm gonna order them A, B, C. What cells make that up? Well, the one on the left is one, one, zero. The one on the right is one, one, one. Which of the terms matter? Which of the terms don't matter? When I say matter, which are the terms that are always constant? When I say don't matter, which are the terms that can take the value of zero or one and it doesn't matter, you're gonna get a one either way? Now look at A and B. A and B are always a one. C could take the value of zero or one. Think about that, C or not C. It doesn't matter with C. So it looks like to me, A and B are terms that matter. So I'm going to say A and it with B. That is the minimum product expression for those two terms. When I say two terms, I'm saying ABC110 and ABC111. They can both be expressed as AB. Now, let's do this thing for the same thing in blue. List out ABC. What are the individual product terms, the individual binary combinations that get us those, get us those ones? A1, B1, C1. We're talking about the top one. What's the bottom one? A1, B0, C1. Which are the terms that matter? Which are the terms that don't matter? Look at this. B can take the value of one or zero, so it doesn't really matter about B to get that one, but A has to be one and C has to be a one. So I'm gonna call that AC. Okay, so what I did, I just did number two for both of them because I had two groups, I had to do it twice. I determined the group product expression for the terms in red, and I'm gonna make that right there. And I came up with a group product expression for the group in blue. Step three, sum the groups. My final answer, X, is the sum of products. So it's the sum of the first product and the second product. That is my final answer for the minimized SOP expression. And what's really neat is I didn't use any of those Boolean rules. I didn't have to use Boolean rule one through 12 to figure these things out. It was a systemized method of going ahead and dumping that expression, the fully expanded SOP expression into a KMAP using these rules of the KMAP. And I know you just saw them. This is the first time you've ever seen the KMAP rules, but using those rules in a systemized manner and I came up with a minimum SOP expression. Okay, and I'm gonna give you guys a, a major shortcut to kind of uh, the next lecture that we're actually gonna do. What if I never had the product term to begin with? This is combining the lecture that we just had with the lecture we're just about to have. What if someone just gave me the truth table? Someone gave me the truth table. I wanna find the minimum SOP expression. I could super, super easy do this because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the ones in the truth table, forget about this garbage right here, just dump them straight into the truth table. Okay, let's go ahead and again, this is one of those examples of what we've done previously. I'm gonna give you the truth table, put it in the K-map and it's the same one. I know I know you're gonna be able to do it and just come up with a minimum SOP expression. Okay, there you go. And um, I'm looking at this one over here. Yeah, I know I've got something lurking over here in the wings. I'm gonna come back to it because it is an incredibly powerful example as to what I'm about to show you. Okay, someone just gave you the truth table and they want the minimum SOP implementation of this thing. And you could use those techniques in our previous lecture and expand all these product terms which we're concerned with, the ones with the ones, out into that full SOP expression. And why why would you do that? Just dump it into the KMAP. A, B, C, find those addresses, one, zero, one, right there. One, one, zero, right there. Triple one, right there. What am I gonna do? Group the ones, maximize the size, minimize the number. What are the sizes? One, two, four, a 16, i.e. powers of two. They must be adjacent to each other. I'm gonna grab the largest group possible and each one must be in a group, but the groups can overlap. I'm gonna grab my red pen. I'm gonna grab that guy. I'm gonna grab my blue pen. I'm gonna grab that guy. This is the exact same one we just did. The one in the red, A, B, C, 110, 111. Which are the terms that matter? A and B matter. C doesn't because it can take the value zero or one. That's my first product term. Whoops, should stick with red with that one. Do the same thing for the blue. One, 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 zero, one, that being A, B, C. Which of the terms that matter? Well, B doesn't matter because it's a zero or one. Looks like A must be a one, C must be a one. Final step, 
sum the groups. My expression x is equal to a, b, or let's stick with those colors, a, c. Exactly what we had earlier. So if someone gives you the SOP expression, the full expanded SOP expression, just come up with those binary combinations right there. If someone gives you the truth table, just take the truth table, stick it right in there. You're going to get the same results. And here is a great example of what I've been talking about earlier. If someone gives you the truth table in reverse, there is an easy way and a hard way to do it. Let's do the hard way. Okay, the hard way is take your bear K map and notice I've got CBA. Take your bear K map and do A, B, C. That's the hard way of doing it. Why would you ever do it this way? You can do it. You'll come up with the same answer as this C, B, A. Whoops. And someone will try to do this and you'll get frustrated. That is the way to do that one. It's so much easier. Just say, stay with the order you are given the truth table. By the way, they are equivalent. This is the same example we used previously. All I'm going to do is I'll show you how quick it is. CBA. There's a that one, that one, that one. Just find the map. Zero, one, one, right there. One, zero, one, right there. Triple one, right there. Try to do it the hard way. Okay. I've got zero, one, one, CBA. What's that in ABC? Well, it's a one, it's a one, it's a zero. Put a one right there. I've got one, zero, one, C, B, A. Flip flop it. A is a one, B is a zero, C is a one right there. Finally, I've got C, B, A, one, one, one. A is a one, B is a one, C is a one right there. It's the same truth tables. But do you see how much longer it took me to translate that truth table if I'm purposely making it hard on myself? Just read the truth table directly into your K-map and you can head your K-map any way you possibly want to. We just did the analysis for this one because it's the same truth table. And this is that implementation earlier. What was the product term? What was our final? It was AB or AC, right? What's the result for this one? The answer is it's the same, but it took me, it took me a lot less effort to put that in there if I kept my K-map in the orientation of my truth table. What's this one's group? Well, let's do our grouping exercise. Group your ones. I got three ones. I'm going to do a group of three, right? Wrong, because there's groups of one, two, four, eight, and 16. So I'm going to find a group of two. I'm going to find another group of two. They're overlapping, okay? So I've maximized the size. I can't go to three, so I'm going to go to two, and the other one's also going to be a two and they're overlapping. They're correctly sized. Those cells are adjacent. If we're referring to the one in the red right now, the north and south are respectfully adjacent to each other. The one in the blue, the north and south are respectfully adjacent to each other. I've grabbed the largest group possible, and every single one on IK map is in a group. Just so happens that one of them is overlapping. What does the term in red, what is the product term for the one is in red? We'll just list it out. A, B, C, right? Wrong, because we went C, B, A. Okay, stay and organize. Super key here. Zero, one, one. One, one, one. Let me make that over there. What are the terms that matter? Well, C can be a zero or a one. Doesn't really matter for that product term. A must be a one and B must be a one. What does blue come out look like? Well, it's a C, B, A. One, one, one. One, zero, one. What are the terms that matter? Well, B doesn't really matter because it could take a value of one or zero. C matters and A matters. We're kind of at step three. We've done the analysis for individual groups. Let's go ahead and sum the groups. X, our final answer, summing BA or CA. Do these look similar? They're the exact same things. All I'm doing is just, I can use the commutative property to call it AB or AC, or I could also call it BA or CA. The point of the thing is, is if someone gives you a truth table ordered in this manner, do your K map in that manner, CBA. If someone gives you a truth table, ABC in this manner, do your K map in this manner. But if you want to make more work for yourself, you're going to get the same results regardless. And that's why I can tell you guys on an exam, what am I looking for? Do you have this, that, and that? I don't care how you organize these things. I do care for the results. You're going to get the same results regardless. So that's a bit of a digression about ordering. Let's actually do example two. If you remember right, it was a four variable Carnot map. And we've already mapped it. Let's go ahead and see if we can perform this analysis. Okay. So here, if you remember right, it was our putting example two, which is a seven product terms into a K map. And if we've done everything correctly. We should have seven ones in there. What are the binary combinations for these things to review here? It's one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, 
zero, zero, zero, one, quadruple zero, one, one, zero, one. And if you look inside here, all those terms are accounted for. So what are we gonna do? Let's go ahead and restate our rules. First one is you group your ones. You wanna go ahead and maximize the size of the groups. How are we gonna do that? Well, the sizes are one, two, four, eight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, what are we gonna do with those things? They must be, um, who must their neighbors be? They must be adjacent. We're gonna grab the largest group, obviously. And then, um, actually this next one is, is minimize the number of groups. All ones must be grouped. Overlapping is acceptable. So let's kind of stick with one for this first portion, but let's go ahead and write out two and three. We're just gonna find the group product expression. And obviously step three, you're gonna make an SOP, sum the groups. Let's pick on somebody here. Let's go find the smallest guy in the room and pick on it, that guy right there. Is there any way I can make a larger group than that one term? Okay, look at his adjacencies. No, 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 no. Some of y'all might say, hey, what about that guy? Well, check it out, it's diagonal. It doesn't work that way. The only north, south, east, and west. Okay, those are the only adjacencies we can get. Okay, so he doesn't look like he has any adjacencies. Is it an acceptable group size? Yeah, it's a power of two. Two to the zero is one. What is his product term? Well, it's orientation A, B, C, D, and that address is one, one, zero, one. I've got that product term. I can't get any bigger than that one. I am going to now do another group. Okay, and this is pretty challenging, pretty challenging to see this here. There's there's three groups total. So I just did the first one. Can you come up with the other two groups? And again, they must be ones, twos, fours, eights, and sixteens. They must be adjacent. I'm gonna grab the largest group available. I'm gonna do the easiest one first. I'm gonna grab this one. Look at that. That's a group of four. They're all adjacent to each other because east and west are always adjacent. And if you want to get funny about it, you can actually go over on the back. They're, they're still adjacent to each other. Okay. What are four of those things in blue? A, B, C, and D. What are the terms that matter for that product expression for that particular group in blue? Well, it's the first one on the left is quadruple zero. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. What are the terms that matter? A always has to be a zero. B always has to be a zero. Looks like C can take the value of zero or one, so it doesn't matter. D can take the value of zero or one, so it doesn't matter. A definitely matters. B definitely matters. But however, look at what the value that matters. It has to be a zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say A matters, but because it's a zero, it's not A. B matters, but because it's a zero, it's not B. We will go back into this in a little bit. I know that may have been a jump, but you can always do this this logic list out here if you want to do that. And I'm going to go back and show you another alternate way of thinking about these things. So that product term right there is not A, and it would not be. This is the tricky one. What's the third product term? Some of y'all might say, hey, I got a group of two right there. Good to go. What am I going to do? I'm going to list it out and hold on. You got something you're missing. Via wrap around adjacency, I've already told you that the top and bottom are adjacent with each other. So I could grab a group of two, yeah, but maximize the size of the group. Again, I can overlap. What if I overlapped a group of four this way, that green group, A, B, C, D? What would I get? I would get the combination. Uh, let's go from, let's start that one, two, three, four. So the one that I'm calling number one, is zero zero one one two is zero zero one zero three is one zero one one four is one zero one zero okay so for the group of four there this is pretty cool does a matter well a is a zero or a one it doesn't really matter does b matter yes b must always be a zero so i'm going to put not b look at c c must always be a one so i'm going to put c D. Does D matter? No. Zero, uh, D can make a, a value of 1 or 0, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Whereas, had I grouped only these two terms, basically not making use of uh, wraparound adjacency, what would I be getting? I'd be getting A, B, C, D, the value 3, which is, well, position 3 is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. What am I getting for that product term? It's A, must always be a 1, B must always be a zero. 
C must always be a 1. D does not matter. This is why it's important to look at the difference between these two. The wraparound adjacency maximize the size of the group. Look at the resultant terms. This one right here I've done incorrectly. I've got three terms. The true minimized expression only has two terms for that product. So that's super important is maximize the size of the groups. I can come up with a simpler expression. We will have plenty of opportunities to make mistakes on this. All right, so I've got three product terms, red, blue, green. What am I going to do? And did I ever write the one for red? It's A and B and not C and D. What am I going to do? Step three, sum the group. My final expression, x is equal to the first product term summed with the second product term, summed with the third product term, A and B, not C, D, or, whoops, let's switch over to our colors there, not A and not B, not B, C. That is the final minimized SOP expansion, which in comparison to what we started with, substantially easier to implement. Did I use any Boolean rules? No. All I did was just put it into a K-map and perform steps one through three with all those messy sub-rules in between and came up with the correct answer. Okay, before I go on to talking about truth tables with this one here, I want to show you a real quick shortcut. You don't have to do this, this listing out. It, the listing out will always work for you. You don't have to do that. So what I'm going to do is show you a shortcut trick that you may want to use, you may not. Uh, let's just use the one in the blue right now. The one in the blue, if you think about this, you don't have to list it because look at this. It's all in that row. If it, everything in that row has the following things in combinations, and com A must be a zero and B must be a zero because they're all in zero, 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 zero. And I'm going to get rid of the stuff on the top here for a second. They're all in that row. CD takes the value of zero, 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 one, 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 zero. So if I listed the things out, you know what would be common. A would always be a zero and B would always be a zero. So if you see things in a row, a single string in a row, they're always zeros. A must be a zero and B must be a zero. So you can graphically think about that. Those groups of four that are actually forming a square as opposed to the ones in a line, a little bit more difficult to see what we're talking about here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this one empty over here. I'm talking about this one, this one, this one, this one, A, B, C, D. I'm going to grab this group in green. It's a group of four. It's via wraparound adjacency. What are the things that's common? Well, look at the rows. A, zero. A, one. A doesn't matter. B, zero. B, zero. B definitely has to be a zero. So what I'm going to do is say, not B. Look at the columns. C, one. C, one. Definitely matters. C. Okay, C always has to be a one. Does D matter? No. It's a one or a zero. So I can kind of graphically uh, think of these things. You don't have to list those things out. And if you've done everything correctly for our full, and then we had that one here. You can't do anything about this. You got to do the full. Groups of one always have the largest number of terms. A, B, C, D. What is that? One, one, zero, one. That should be what we came up with earlier. So that's a little shortcut. You don't always have to use that listing out the ones. Okay, let's try this thing. Let's say no one gave you that product term. No one gave you, thankfully no one gave you that because it's seven product terms. It's a mess. Someone just gave you the truth table right here. Come up with a minimum SOP expression as fast as possible. How do you do it? Are you going to do an SOP expansion? No, you're not. Put it in a Cayman. Look at how it's ordered. A, B, C, D. If I gave you T, D, C, B, A, what would you do? Would you try to put it in a Cayman with A, B, C, D? Some of you would. Uh, you're making your life hard. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a Cayman. A, B, C, D. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero. Where's the ones? There's one right there. There's one right there. There's one. Where is it in the K-map? Over there. Okay, this is what I, this is why I like using those K-maps earlier with that cheat sheet. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, what am I doing? No, I'm doing right. Fourteen, fifteen. These are nice because you've got the binary numbers. Just read this one. What is that? That's three. That's this position right there. Bang. What's this one? That's 10. What's that position right there? Bang. You don't have to use this technique. What's that? That's 11. That one right there. And finally, what am I at right there? That's 13. Where's 13? Right there. Look at that K-map. It looks exactly like that SOP expression we came up with there. You might want to use these cheat sheets 
if you're given those um, truth tables, you can just look at those numerical values. They probably didn't make sense earlier, but now when you see these things laid out in a truth table format, you might be able to use this. How am I going to do this? Grab that group, very similar. Grab that group, very similar to what we just did. And I'm going to grab that group of four of your wraparound adjacents. What are those expressions? A, B, not C, D. Ord with, and just look at it visually. That row, and I'm talking about the one in the blue, that row is always A0. That row is always B0. C's and D's, they could take any any value possible, 0 and 1. doesn't matter for C and D. Okay, now look at that group of 4 that's in the shape of a square. A little bit harder to see, but notice this row, oops, let's use green. This row is always the ups and downs. The rows are always not B. And what's, a, what's this right there? Those are always C's. C's. Is that the same expression that we got right there? Let's see if I can get them on the same screen. Yes, it is. Okay, all I did was just copy and paste the previous with our new. Okay, that was with just using the truth table. That one was using the expression. You should be able to do either one of them, which is faster truth table. As soon as you get that truth table, you can immediately spit that thing in there. Why is it fast? Because I'm keeping order. Let's go ahead and do some more examples with this.